And I want to invite you to turn in your Bibles to Colossians chapter 1. And we did do a verse-by-verse -verse study of Colossians a while back, not too long ago, but um, this, this particular passage, I think, really uh, speaks to us today. Um, and I want to, want to just take a few minutes to look at verses 9 through 14. Colossians 1, verses 9 through 14. Now I'll ask you to stand with me as you're able to and honor the reading of God's Word. Colossians 1, beginning with verse 9. Paul writes, For this reason we also, since the day we heard of it, do not cease to pray for you and to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of His will, in all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing Him, being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all might, according to His glorious power, for all patience and long-suffering with joy, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of His love in whom we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins. Heavenly Father, thank You for your holy word and for this portion we've read together. Bless it now. Speak to us and help us to hear what you want to say to each of us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. So have you ever felt as though life had just kind of kicked you in the teeth? I think we've all felt that way before, haven't we? You're just going about life, minding your own business, and, and boom, life deals you a blow that you feel totally unprepared for and incapable of handling. Most of us have been there many times in our lives. I just, this morning was talking with a man who said, you know, I never dreamed I would reach the last stages of my life and have all of this pain to deal with, not know what to do. It's a sentiment I think we all can relate to on some level. Maybe it was a time you found out about the death of a loved one. Or maybe when you lost a job or when you got a late night phone call from the county jail. Maybe the doctor had some devastating news. You were not prepared for it. And whoever said that life is fair lied. Life is not fair. There used to be a popular Christian song on the radio. And it said, life is hard but God is good. And that's true, isn't it? Life is hard, but God is good. Sometimes, life is so hard it knocks us down. We may not even want to get up. But what do we do at those times? How do we deal with those days when we feel as though life has just kicked us in the teeth? How do we deal with that pain? How do we deal with the devastation? As a Christian, we are not immune from trouble. We're not. But as a Christian, you and I, we have a source of strength that can get us through all of our troubles. 
that will help us to deal with the difficulties that the world puts before us. In our text, Paul is addressing the Colossian church from a Roman prison of all places. And if you hear his encouragement to the Colossians, you'd never think that he himself was actually in prison as he wrote this. Now these people never had a church building that they could worship in. At least that we know of. We know that they met in the home of Philemon who himself was a recipient of one of Paul's letters from prison. The people of this great city were turning back to paganism. It was a time of the Roman Empire. They were being influenced by they were being influenced by, by these false teachers. People who were adding to the grace of God or taking away from the grace of God and the atoning death of Christ. There were people there who had some very real problems. Who were very, very much struggling to get by their day-to-day lives. Living in a world that wasn't fair... They had practical needs, but they also had some serious spiritual needs. They were people whom life had knocked down. They needed this encouragement. They needed this letter from Paul. They needed some encouragement as to the practical aspects of living for Christ on a daily basis. They needed to know that God loved them. That He was a forgiving God. Not just a a legalistic judge. Not just someone who would put their heads on the chopping block if they weren't perfect. Excuse me. Sounds an awful lot like a lot of people we know today, doesn't it? The people in Colossae were were just normal people dealing with the normal pains of life as many are today. So in the first part of this letter, right after his introduction, Paul offers his prayer. And first of all, he offers thanksgiving for the faith of this church. Now his, his prayer here, his encouragement is a little different from what we learned about the Philippian church on Wednesday night. He had a special bond Paul did with the Philippian church. And he told them that every time he thought about them, he thanked God. He prayed for them. That was not the case here, but Paul let them know that he loved them. So much so that whenever he prayed, he mentioned them in his prayers. He gave thanks to God for them. He offers a prayer of a prayer for them to know God's will, a prayer for knowledge for them, a prayer for spiritual wisdom, for understanding. And then the text elaborates on this prayer. Each point that he makes in this passage answers the question, what do you do When life knocks you down. So first of all we see. That you have a place to go for strength. Praise that they are strengthened. With all might. 
you can find no greater strength anywhere than the strength that's available through Almighty God. Paul reminded the Colossians of this. It's something that you and I need to remember as well. When we're weak, the greatest strength available is available to us. That's good news, people. Maybe you think, well, I'm a, I'm a pretty strong person. I can handle pretty much anything life sends my way. But the truth is, the greatest strength that you and I can muster is not even measurable by God's standards. It's nothing compared to the strength that He provides for those of us who have been born again. His strength is perfect. It's perfect when we're at our weakest point. It's perfect when we feel as though we just can't go on or do anything. I know people who have survived storms of life that, that I could not imagine having gone through. And some of them are sitting right here today. People who have been strong, brave. But the truth is, it's not them. It's the strength of God in them. And they themselves will tell you that it, his strength is all that got them through. He comforts. He encourages. He, he reassures us. He helps us to cope and to move forward with life's duties as well as life's blessings. I trust that you know that strength today. You can know it through Jesus Christ. You have a relationship with Him. And I pray that you're never brought to the point of desperation where you're forced to wander aimlessly searching for strength. The fact is, there is ample supply of strength available to you right now. It's enough to help you get through anything you can imagine, no matter how difficult. It flows from the very throne of God. So it doesn't get any better than that. And it is your birthright through Jesus Christ. That strength is your birthright. If you have been saved by the grace of God through Jesus. As a child of God, all you have to do is reach out and grasp it. Use it. If you're lost, don't give up because there's hope for you too. The supply is, is available to all. And it's free. So what's the catch? You have to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. You have to know Him as your personal Savior. If you accept Jesus and what He did for you when He died on the cross and rose again on the third day, if you trust Him Repent of your sin. He'll be your Savior. He'll come into your heart. He'll never leave you. or forsake you. So when life knocks you down, you have a place to go for strength. But secondly, you have a divine source for endurance. Endurance. See, in verse 11, Paul writes, for all patience and long-suffering. What is long-suffering? In this context, it means endurance. 
Endurance is the ability to go on, to keep pressing toward the mark. It's a glorious gift that so many of you have displayed in the face of adversity in your lives. Others of us have been blessed to witness that. Endurance is what you need when you feel as though you don't even want to go on anymore. When we're hopeless and without a, a friend. Maybe even unable to pray. Endurance is what keeps us from giving up. Sometimes we might rather give up than to endure. We might rather just disappear from existence. But that's never something that we have a right to do. We don't have that right, and here's why. We're not our own. We were bought by the blood of Jesus. We're not in control. It's not about us. It's about Him. We belong to God. And as His, we have no right to say we're not going on. No matter how sad we may be, no matter how hurt we may feel. Having said that, the only way that I know of that we can go on with our lives after we've been knocked down is through the strength that God provides. And with that strength, we're able to get up back on our feet. And through the endurance that he gives us to keep going on and to fulfill the tasks he's called us to. So when life knocks you down, remember, you have a place to go for strength. And you have a divine resource for endurance. The third thing I want you to notice is that you have a ready supply of patience. That may surprise you. Patience. Verse 11 says, for all patience and Long suffering. Patience is something that almost everyone I know needs a little more of, including myself. Patience. I don't know many people who are patient. It's something I wish I had was able to, to exhibit more of in my life. But I'm learning in some areas. I remember being a young boy in church and hearing many preachers say that you should never pray for patience because that means God's going to send trials your way for you to develop patience. You ever heard that? So I've always been careful. Don't pray for patience. Don't pray for patience. That means God's going to test me, right? Well, remember, one source of patience is the one that we can tap into when we need it most. We can, we can tap into that source of patience from God when it's needed and still pray, God, I, I hope you don't send anything my way to, to make me have to tap into that source more often. I'm still learning. We actually have a ready supply. Patience. See, the Heavenly Father is the source of every good and perfect gift. That includes patience. It's at your disposal, child of God. Patience is available to you. And tap into that source. Jesus Christ. When you're hurting, look to Him. He'll give you peace. That'll help you to have patience. When life knocks you down, reach out for His hand and He'll give you strength and endurance to get up 
And he'll give you the patience to move on and to be obedient. Finally, when life knocks you down, you have a glimpse of future victory. A glimpse of future victory. Now, it's not often that, that we can say we could... We have a glimpse even of the future. Some people claim that they can see the future. Sometimes we have a sense of deja vu and we say, well, I think I saw this before somewhere. But we, through Jesus, have a glimpse of future victory. What greater encouragement could we find than in what we see here in verses 13 and 14? He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of His love, in whom we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins. What a glorious future we have. Because, not because of what we've done, but because of what He did for us. No matter what your life was like before Jesus, now, He's rescued you. No matter what sin you have committed, He forgives. If you're lost today, this is hope. You're in the right place. And you have the opportunity to walk out of here with a new life today. This is good news, folks. The Bible tells us that in Christ we are a new creation. When we look at someone and think, I remember when so and so did this and that and the other. That person's a child of God. That doesn't exist anymore. God has forgiven them. He's forgotten it. And his sin is as far as has been removed from them as far as the east is from the west. So we have no right to hold it against them either. Oh, how wonderful to know that no matter what sins may have bound us in the past, the Lord Jesus has rescued us and He's freed us. That's good news, folks. We were hostages of Satan. We were bound by sin. But Jesus arose from the grave and he brought back the keys to hell. He set us free forever and ever. No one can take that away. No one can change that. The only catch. You say, well, there's always a catch. Well, the only catch is you have to accept what he did for you. His atonement. You must repent of your sin and trust Him as Savior. Aren't you glad that Jesus has rescued you from the curse of sin? That's a question. Aren't you glad? Yeah. He's rescued us from the curse of sin. That curse that only leads to heartache and guilt, pain. He's forgiven us. He's redeemed us. But even more, Paul says, he, he brought us into the kingdom of His beloved Son. We're not of this world. We're just pilgrims here. We're just passing through. The good news is, we have a home that's been built by God for us if we'll accept it. How about that? It's being prepared in a land that's beyond our dreams. It's a place of perfect rest, a place where we'll never get sick, where we'll never experience pain or sorrow, a place where we'll never shed another tear. A place where we'll never have to pray for strength 
or endurance or patience or hope ever again. Perfect place. And as for this life, there's hope here as well. See, when life knocks us down, our hope is in the Lord. Very simply. Our hope is in the Lord. My challenge today is if you haven't trusted Him, to do so while you have this opportunity. With heads bowed and eyes closed. Do you know Jesus today as your Savior? Not wondering if you know about Him. If you've studied and know a lot of facts. Not even asking if you believe that He is who the Bible says He is. What I'm asking you is if you have a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus. I'm asking you, is He your best friend? Your closest friend today. Regardless of what happens here on Sundays. Is he right beside of you? And are you aware of that each and every moment? Are you relying on him for strength and endurance. And patience and hope. And the future victory. If you don't know Jesus. I'm inviting you to trust Him today. Christian, are you tapping into that that wonderful source of strength and endurance and patience and hope and that vision of the future victory that He provides by living for Him every moment, every day? Or are you struggling? Has life knocked you down and made you want to give up? Do you make things right today? Do you put your faith and your trust in Him completely? If you're here today and you need someone to pray with you, I want to invite you to come. Allow me that privilege. If you need to kneel at this altar and pray, you come. Maybe God's led you to this church and He wants you to serve here. Our doors are open to you. You come. Heavenly Father, whatever it is that you want to do in each of our lives today, I pray that your Spirit will have the liberty to move among us and stir us and that we would be obedient your call upon our lives. And Lord, we give you all the praise for what you do now. In Jesus' name, amen.